All right, well, welcome. Thank you all for coming. Um, we do want to start with a couple of points like we always do at the beginning of the press conferences. So um, today we had an opportunity to hear from council regarding their 60th anniversary as a university. And so I know um, both the chair and the president have a few comments uh, regarding the progress that they have made over the last six decades. President Chair Williams, good luck to the first. So we're very pleased to be here at UMSO and to recognize the important progress that they've made over the past 60 years. Uh, this year, they've seen almost a 60% increase in first-time college student applications. That's a major feat. In addition to that, the Chancellor shared with us the key priorities in research on advanced uh, pharmaceuticals as well as geospatial and controlled agriculture. There's so many great activities going on, and I'm very pleased that UMSO is an important part of the UM system. Yeah, I, I would second what he said. I think the board is extremely excited and proud of the fact that UMSO is, is making it a priority to partner with the businesses in St. Louis to make sure that they're providing the workforce that they need, i.e. partner with you know agriculture, partner with pharmaceuticals, partnering with businesses and, and financial companies to make sure that they're preparing the workforce that St. Louis needs. And, and I think we are so excited and proud of all the partnerships that we're seeing and the time and energy and effort that they're dedicating to that. And I'm going to throw a small audible in here. We were meeting with Blythe um, yesterday uh, afternoon, and we had a couple of specific questions about OMSOL. Do you have a question about OMSOL? We'll get to other questions later, but do you have any questions about OMSOL we're talking about? Um, no. Okay, all right, that's fine. Thank just want to make sure that we were okay for that particular topic before we move on. Um, secondly, as you all just heard, we have just elected a new uh, board chair and vice chair that are effective January the 1st of 2024. And so wanted to open it up to both chair-elect uh, Lenniker and vice chair-elect Graves to have them have a couple of comments, and then we'll open it up for questions generally. Chair, uh, vice chair, uh, chair-elect Lenniker. A lot of different titles. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll uh, start by thanking um, Chair Williams. He is an amazing team player. It was a real honor to spend this last year in partnership with him on the board. Um, and I'm equal and maybe equally excited to get to work with Curator Graves next year in that role. Um, and then, of course, our administration. So I think it's an exciting time to be a part of the University of Missouri system. Um, all of our campuses or all of our universities are doing uh, incredible things. Um, as I look forward, I think we always talk about academic excellence, our need to be an outstanding university. We talk about our, our need to continue to grow our research dollars, always important. And uh, I mean, sorry, we could list four or five things. I'm particularly interested in healthcare and how we continue to expand our footprint. That's partially because I spent the last two years as chair of that committee. But we know it's a high priority for our citizens, how they can access healthcare. And we think we're one of the answers to that, especially in mid-Missouri. Um, and we continue to grow that footprint, obviously, with the recent integration of CAP Region. And then last, um, you know, I think we're all mindful that we're here on behalf of our fellow citizens and we're excited when people bring in new businesses or want to grow their businesses. It's incumbent upon us to create those degrees, to create those programs that allow us to expand the workforce of our fellow Missourians or even help bring Missouri uh, people outside Missouri to it. So um, all of our universities have people outside the state that choose to come here, and it's our goal to keep them here and, and, help, and help them work in Missouri industries. Uh, yeah, just very briefly, I'm very uh, grateful that uh, my fellow curators have uh, supported me for this. Uh, it's particularly exciting to be here when we get to build, and we fortunately get to be here when we get to build. And uh, the the medical complex uh, additions we're doing in Kansas City, the, the medical school in St. Joseph, very close to where I live, uh, the um, Energy Innovation Center we just heard about, the... Uh, the protoplex, there's so many plexes in uh, Rolla now, I can't, <laughs> bioplex, protoplex, all of those uh, are, are really neat things. The research reactor, which is a few years down the road, but something that we're spending time on already. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, I'm uh, happy to work with the administration. I think we have a strong administration at the university right now. Uh, I think we've had strong leaders in Chapman and Williams and Winokur, and so uh, it's just a, it's a good time to be here, and I'm grateful that I'm able to. Thank you. Sure, Williams, do you have any comments you'd like to make as you wrap up your year? Yeah. Um, well, I think we've had an exciting year. I think um, the best part of being the chair is getting to work on individual projects with each curator or with each committee. I think Robin has been a stalwart uh, for making sure that the healthcare committee 
um, was focused on providing services to all of Mid-Missouri and making sure that we were very successful with Cap Region. I think, you know, Curator Graves has made it his business to deal with our financial resources and heading the Finance Committee and making sure we are uh, good stewards of the money that the legislature, that our parents, our students, our communities have, have in, entrusted us with. Um, I think we are seeing that, that this board wanted to be more engaged with each campus. And so I think we've made it a, an effort to get out to each campus and meet the students, meet the faculty, meet the staff, because it helps us understand what the administration is dealing with. Um, and so we've had a presence on all four campuses uh, to make sure that we were a part of these communities. And, and we look forward to continuing to do that. Thank you. President Choi, any other comments about the chair elect? Or, uh... Well, as I as I stated in my in my remarks, I look forward to working with uh, chair elect Weddecker and vice chair elect uh, Graves. They've demonstrated through their service the deep commitment for Missourians and the accountability that we must demonstrate each and every day so that we can achieve the excellence. And so it's going to be an exciting year of building and so many different venues and different areas of the university's mission. And I look forward to working with both of them. Thank you. So now we're going to go around the room, and we will get to those who are on the phone. I know currently I have three reporters on the phone, two from the Tribune and one from KMIZ. Let me know or let us know if there's anyone else who's on there. We're going to start with home turf first. So I'm going to go to Blythe from the Post-Dispatch. We'll, we'll provide um, each person two questions, and then we'll move on to the next outlet. So Blythe? Okay. Um, I just have one question. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> I focus more on K-12 education, and so I'm curious what you think your role is at the University of Missouri for addressing one of our biggest challenges in the state, which is a teacher shortage. Um, what do you see as the university's role? Well, oh, we have a, <coughs> excuse me, we have a major role. Uh, as a system, we produce more teachers than any other university in the state. We take great pride in that, but also, not just the number of uh, teachers that we graduate, but the quality of those teachers to be able to work in different environments, whether they are in metropolitan areas like here or in rural parts of the state. And so our structured, focused approach to ensure that we have high quality teachers that understand how to bring out the very best in K through 12 students is critically, critically important. That's something that we take very, very seriously. Yeah. All right, we'll go to the Missourian Michael Howie from the Missourian. We'll get the first question. Yeah, um, so when it comes to the new proposed building, the, uh, the you know, Center for Innovation mm -hmm. the Engineering School, um, I'm curious how you're going to use the experience that you've had with NextGen and the successes of that um, new initiative to kind of guide the uh, development of that building and some of the, the purposes of, of the research that you'd like to do with that building. The next-gen building was built with the purpose of creating collaboration. So if you were to visit the laboratories, you'll see that it has very few walls so that researchers that are working in one discipline can collide with researchers working in a completely different discipline so that we can have the melding of ideas that can happen in that collision space. In the same way, the Center for Energy Innovation will bring wall list laboratories so that we have the very best of our faculty and students and staff working on these very innovative problems because incremental steps are not what we're shooting for. We're shooting for transformations in those four areas that were identified as part of the CEI. Oh, yeah, um, just totally different topic, uh, but you know, Kira DeWenneker and Kira DeGraves, uh, just, you know, I've heard your thoughts about and your goals for the year, but, um, you know, if you had to talk about what your legacy for both of you, what, what you wanted your legacy to be as chair and vice chair this year, mm -hmm. how would you put that in words? Wow, a little early. Oh, that's, um, a, that's a great question. <laughs> it is a good question. J school student. Well, there you go. Um, I'm going to think about that. You know, I 
we have been on a great trajectory, and I think as we um, we want to first of all continue that trajectory, but I think it's incumbent upon us this next couple of years, and that, that, that transition will probably start uh, maybe in our year. And, and Curator Graves does a good job of talking about this. This thing about after we've received so much federal and state funding, how do we transition um, a little less aggressive? Uh, probably we probably will not be able to continue to do the, the aggressive building that we have, but we have a real opportunity to finish the projects we started that we already have funding on that we have donors excited about. And so I hope at the end of this year that we have made good progress or we finish those pro finish some of those projects, have good progress on the others, and also been good financial stewards for the university going forward. You know, as vice chair, it's pretty simple. Robin's the chair, so I hope my legacy is vice chair <laughs> that I helped her reach the goals that she had. I mean, that's kind of simple, but I think we all have the same goals uh, or similar goals. We want the university to be better. We want to be ranked in every category, academic categories, athletic categories, we want to be ranked better than we are now. Alex. Alex Cox from Missouri. I'm also from Canada. I just think it's nice. um, what, um, specifically this is talking about the um, gifts and the endowments. Um, what will happen with agreements that don't include the human mind clause with the new amendment? I'm going to turn that, if it's okay, turn that over to our general counsel, Mark Mangini. Yeah, each of those... Uh, our group here at the university will reach out to the individuals or entities that bestowed those gifts and agreements in the first place and try to work with them uh, to amend those things appropriately. The benefit of the human mind clause is that parties agree at the front end that we don't have to go through that process if things change later on. Some of those older, uh, older endowments and gifts don't have that, so we're already started in the process of reaching out to those. One more question, Dan? Uh, completely off topic, uh, just like Michael, and, um, you know, the J School has taught me one thing, it never hurts to ask, um, is there anything you can share from this morning's executive se session? <laughs> I, I don't think so, but Chair, <laughs> Chair Williams, um, I think we can share that we had a very good conversation, that we learned a lot, and that the board has a lot to consider and think about. Um, I think we have a lot of things on the table that that require deep thought and, and planning. And so I think our executive session was that to help us focus in on what is it, what is it we need to be most focused on coming up. And it's not completed. Executive session. And executive oh, session. Yeah. We we've got another meeting to get to after this to to figure those things out. Tia is from KLMU. Hi, nice to see you all. Okay, I have two questions. The first one will be a little bit easier. Um, so on the MU Athletics, according to their news release, they had mentioned they presented a master plan that would, quote, change all of the sports facilities and athletics um, at Mizzou. Um, however, that was not on the agenda we discussed today. Did you guys discuss that? Did they present that plan to you? And what can you do about that? That's the easy question. Yeah. <laughs> That's the easy question. Um, so what I would say is, Things discussed in executive session uh, remain there until and unless we complete the executive session, which is going to be ongoing this afternoon. And then the board has a chance to end that executive session with the discretion of what goes next. So that's where we're at at this point. Can I add one more thing? Yeah, absolutely. But the administration and the board are, are very excited about athletics and what it can do for the university. And we're seeing the excitement throughout the state because of the success of the football program. And so I uh, wanted to share that we are very excited about athletics. Great, perfect. And then I'm going to just be elephant in the room. Of course, as you all know, there was a lawsuit that was filed today from two minors that are receiving a care at MU Healthcare. What comments do you have to say about that? What stats are you have about? So if I may, we just received it. We're evaluating it now, but from the beginning, our position was we're going to follow the law of the land. And uh, so that, that approach is not going to change. We're going to evaluate what the lawsuit has to say, but we just received it. And uh, we'll have some more uh, uh, clarifications that we may seek, but uh, we're not ready to do that now. So we're going to go to the phone. Colin from the Tribune, do you have two questions? Uh, I just have one question. Uh, it's again on the, uh, the facilities master plan for uh, the Columbia campus. Uh, I know you touched on it a little bit there, but I was just wondering when uh, public might expect updates on that facilities master plan. 
premature until we get through executive session. Yeah, I think I I think what we're doing is we're we're going to um, go back into executive session. We have a lot of things we're talking about and considering. And, and once we know a timeline, we're happy to share it. We just don't have one right now because we are still in the middle of our executive session. Uh, and then, uh, Roger, do you have a couple of questions? Yeah, uh, I have a question on the Center for Energy and Innovation, but it's uh, more on the physical uh, structure. Uh, it seems like it, it probably will be a pipe fit on campus, and uh, was wondering what uh, challenges will that construction be uh, when it takes place? Roger, we're going to have to get back to you on that. Um, I didn't think it was a tight fit because uh, there's space available where the old Parker and Noyes building used to be that were demolished about a year and a half ago. And there is open space between uh, Switzerland Hall as well as uh, Laffrey Hall. So there is there is sufficient space for this building. But I'll have Beth Asbury get back to you. Related uh, kind of, uh, uh, will the design blend in with what is was traditionally the the red campus, or was that not a consideration? It is a consideration, but we've not developed the finalized plans to present to the board. We want to uh, honor the heritage of the red brick campus and the look of that campus. That's our plan. Okay, Jasmine from. Uh, Oh, yes, Roger. Uh, just a point of clarification, and this might be uh, something for you, Christian. On the slide on strategic funding, uh, does that represent current federal funding that uh, that the uh, center for will increase, or is it's? Uh, tell me if somebody could tell me. Yes. The strategic funding that I believe you're referring to are the federal federal projects that support whether these are projects in, at the National Science Foundation or Department of Energy that are targeted to energy innovations. Those are, those are opportunities that we have to write competitive proposals that will be evaluated before we get the funding. Those aren't uh, currently in place. No, they're not. Thank you, Roger. Jasmine from PMIZ, are you still on? Yes, yes, I'm still here. Do you have a couple uh, questions? Question is, yes, I have two questions. They're both regarding the dining and housing increase, uh, rate increase for the University of Missouri and Columbia. Um, I'm wondering, will there be any you know, facility upgrades to go along with this as well? Uh, there are deferred maintenance projects that are going on throughout the uh, throughout the dining and and residence facilities. I don't have that in front of me, but that's also something that we can provide for you through uh, Beth Asbury. Yeah, Jasmine, just give me a send me an email. We'll connect. We'll get you connected. Yeah, yeah, sure. I can definitely do that. Do you have another email? Uh, or another question? Yes, yes, I do. Um, I was reading some of the documents that you guys have, and housing and dining is responsible, I guess, for 37% of the debt. Uh, can you explain the reasoning on why they are such a big chunk of it? Uh, we have many residence halls throughout all four universities, and uh, the university system built these halls because we want to provide our students with with the modern living arrangement, and uh, those were good investments because we're able to attract students that want to attend residential universities and get that experience. So it is a, it was a thoughtful decision to make those investments and the increases that we are uh, seeking will help to ensure that they have the deferred maintenance uh, budgets to be able to maintain their status. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, also, I can actually confirm who I'm speaking with. I know I've oh. been with a whole it was, it's Moon Choi. That was President Choi, Jasmine. President Choi? Yes. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any other reporters on the phone? Okay. 
Well, I know that the board has to get into executive session, and we have quite a few questions, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. We'll see you all at the next board meeting.